everyone. Um, I'm happy to be here, excited to be here. I've never been to DevOps days before, but I walk by this building every day in my walk to work. So I'm actually excited to be in the building too. It's gonna be really cool. Uh, so yeah, a little bit about myself. My name is Mike Miles. I'm the VP of Development for a digital marketing agency called Genuine. So uh, we do everything from uh, the implementation and strategy, UX, design, and development of online applications for our clients. Uh, in the development department that I lead, we use a lot of DevOps tools to automate our build processes, and it's a lot of fun. Um, at night, I host a podcast called Developing Up, which is focused on the non-technical side of being a developer and engineer. So everything you need to know about having a career in this field uh, that doesn't have to do with technology. So it's all like the soft skills around it, such as connect, uh, networking. Um, you can find me anywhere online at Mike Miles 86 Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, um, not on Facebook, I'm sorry, Facebook. Uh, <laughs> anyways, networking. It's a big scary word uh, in my experience for engineers. So I'm not talking about networking with systems or computers, I'm talking about networking with other people. Um, I think everybody here is a step ahead of that because we're all at a conference, we've all been talking during lunch and during the break, so that's great. But networking is very important for your career and your job. Why is it important? It's all about uh, on the at your left. On the left here, opportunities. You're not gonna find opportunities in your role, in your career, in your life without being able to talk to other people and building these connections with other people that you can have mutual benefit, uh, be mutually beneficial. It's gonna help in your career. Uh, like here at a conference, you're meeting a lot of people. Maybe you're gonna learn about a new technology or new um, framework that you haven't used or you haven't thought about using, but you had a conversation with somebody, you bring back to your team, you improve your processes. It's, it's gonna improve your life because you're gonna build up skills to talk to other people, make connections with other people, and use those again to find opportunities, personal opportunities, new job opportunities, and whatnot. So why it's important is because being able to talk to people and make an impact is an important skill. It doesn't matter what career you have, it's just an important people skill. It's one that I personally think is very hard to do. Um, I, I'm sure some people would uh, agree with me, but it's something that if you learn how to do it and do it well, you're gonna find a lot of uh, benefits. So what we're gonna talk about is because, you know, this is DevOps days, uh, we like to break things into automated processes that we can repeat. I am going to break down the act of networking with other people into three phases across eight different steps, repeatable steps, so that you don't have to spend, like from the keynote this morning, uh, you don't have to spend those uh, money coins, those mind coins, uh, every time you wanna make a new connection with someone. And I will use some real world case studies from my personal life and how it's benefited my career to help show you the benefits. So networking, three simple fa phrases, uh, blah, phases. <laughs> the preparation phase, the engagement phase where you do all the work, uh, and then the connection phase where you keep the connection that you build alive if you wanna do that. You can see the engagement phase is the, the biggest part. It takes the mo most amount of effort for yourself, uh, but it, it, it produces great results. So number one, the prep phase, step one, have a plan of attack. Know what you're going to do anytime you enter in a potential networking opportunity. Now, a networking opportunity can be many things. It could be waiting in a coffee line at a conference and turn around to talk to somebody. It could be stuck at the airport because of delay. It could be um, meeting with a new client or new stakeholders at your job. <coughs> those are all networking opportunities. So you wanna go into each one of those having a plan of what you wanna accomplish. I think if you don't have a plan, it's easy to get overwhelmed and kind of just step back and, and not engage. So I say set a goal. Pick the one thing you wanna accomplish at a networking event and only focus on that one thing. Be that meet one new person, learn their name, learn what they do. It could be you know, meet 10 people. It could be share a personal anecdote of uh, something positive you've learned in the last 24 hours. Just set a goal that's simple and achievable and focus on that so you don't get overwhelmed in any networking situation. So our first case study, I don't expect anybody to recognize this man dancing in this gif. Uh, that is the old president of my company, Genuine, John Grayson. Uh, he's dancing at my wedding here. He actually married my wife and I. Uh, so how long was it ago? Like 11 years ago, I was asked, uh, my college, Wentworth, which is here in Boston as well, uh, I was asked to come and be part of this group to revamp the computer science department and the curriculum. So I went there for the evening, I talked with my old professors and I told her like, I did not like the job I was at currently. I told her how it wasn't fulfilling, I wasn't getting a lot, I didn't like the people I was working for. So she looked at me and she said, 
there's going to be someone here tonight who owns a digital company who needs developers. I'm going to sit you next to that person, and your job tonight is to talk with him and make a connection. She gave me a goal for the evening. Lo and behold, that person was John Grayson. So I sat down next to John Grayson the whole night. I, I participated in what I was supposed to do. But I talked to John. I learned about his company, learned about what they do. I tried to share stuff about my stuff and about myself and how it aligned. And we talked the whole night. He asked for my, he gave me his business card, asked for my resume. Two days later, I was in for an interview. By the end of the week, I had a job offer. I've been at that company for 10 years now. Had I not been given that goal by that professor and focused on that goal that she gave me, I wouldn't have engaged in that conversation. Who knows where my career would have been? It would not be as fulfilling as it is today. So set a goal for yourself, step one. Step two, method acting. Figure out who you're going to be for the situation. To do this, I say adopt a persona. It, it can be easy for humans to think negatively of ourselves, to be like, you want me to go talk to a stranger? Uh, that's not the type of person I am. I'm not, I'm not good at doing that. I can't make small talk. Envision the best version of yourself for the situation and try to be that person, or at least pretend and imagine what that person would do. It doesn't have to be yourself. It could be think of somebody you know in your social circles who's like, you know, Randy's really great at just walking up to people and talking to them. I don't know how he does it, but this is what he would do in this situation and try to do that. Case study, every time I present. So the person you see before you right now, this is presenter Mike Miles. This is not everyday Mike Miles. I get, even just in the last session, I was sitting in the middle here and I was really nervous. Hands were shaking because I knew I was going to come up and present. But as soon as I get on stage, I adopt a version of myself that I think would do best in this situation. Now, I built this persona by watching a lot of other great presenters that I've learned a lot from their talks, and I've tried to adapt what they've done and learn what they've done. And over the years, as you do it, that persona, that version of yourself that's best for the situation becomes second nature. So as soon as I stepped up on the stage, it was like that. That persona took over, and then you see presenter Mike Miles, and I can talk to you confidently. As soon as I get off here, I'll black out, and I won't remember what I said. <laughs> it's, you know, it's weird, but it works. All right, step three, the three-second rule. This is probably the most important step to start the engagement of a, so, uh, of a networking situation. You have to outrun your anxiety, any anxiety you may have. Now, the three-second rule comes from uh, Neil Strauss, who wrote the book The Game, which is actually about dating. Um, I heard this interview on the Smart Passive Income podcast with Pat Flynn. And he says, you know, never give yourself more than three seconds to psych yourself out if you want to meet somebody new. The idea is that if you sit there for longer than three seconds, you're going to start to doubt yourself and not engage uh, and, and make a connection. But if you only give yourself three seconds and just go for it, you, you can't psych yourself out. So be fearless. You know, what's the worst that could happen by introducing yourself? The worst is that the person's not wanna, going to want to engage, and then you move on to another situation. And that's easier said than done. I understand that. Another case study. The first time I met Dries Boutart. Does anybody know who Dries is here? A couple hands. Low. That's all right. Um, so Dries is the creator of a PHP framework called Drupal. It's something that I use um, every day because uh, I am a, a developer. Yes, I use PHP, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, yeah, all right, good. Uh, <laughs> they're based here in Boston. So I've used Drupal for, for over a decade now, and you know he's the guy who created it. You see him at the conferences, kind of the rock star in the room when he's there. And so I was at this uh, yearly conference for Drupal, a couple years ago, and I saw Dries at this, the party I was at, and I really wanted to talk to him. I really wanted to tell him how I enjoyed using the framework he built and how I love the open source community and everything behind it. I didn't know about the three second rule at the time. So I spent the whole party moving around Dries, like slowly circling him. <laughs> I just couldn't, I couldn't engage with him. So this is, not, I, this is not a step to do, but I got some liquid courage because there were free whiskey drinks. Yes, and so finally, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. Dries is standing there, and I went, one, two, three, and I stepped in front of him. I mumbled something about how great Drupal was, and it was great to meet him. He, he nodded politely, and then I left, and I, I, was done. I blacked out after that, too. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I had to figure out and get past that anxiety I had to, to meet with him. And he's just another person. Uh, so I counted to three in my head, and I did it. So I say do that for yourself. When you're about to engage with someone, you know, you figure out, I'm going to say your target person you want to talk with. You're like, all right, I'm going to go over there, one, two, three, and just start walking and start doing it. Take action. Step four, say cheese. You know, this is all about what's going on with your face. So who would you rather talk to? The person on your left or the person on your right? If you want to make 
an engagement and network with somebody a positive experience, you have to bring the positivity. So keep positive, smile, be open, and be friendly. I'm not saying put on a joker smile, like, but think about every time you're about to engage that it's going to be an opportunity for yourself. Think positively about that. So get a smile on as you're walking over and extending your hand, you know, you're gonna say hello, be friendly. If you're not, if you're just like, hey, what's, what's going on? Like not even looking at the person, it's not, gonna, it's not starting off well, you're not gonna start building a connection with that person. Step five, the magic word. The word that everyone loves to hear. I get this from uh, this rule from uh, another uh, thing that I've read uh, from Dale Carnegie, who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People, a book that's been in print for like 90 years. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. So he says, remember that, to a, that a person's name to that person is the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Think about it. No matter the size of the room you're in, if you hear someone mention your name, even if they're across the room, your ears pick it up, right? You pick up your name. Everyone loves to hear their name. So as you start to talk with someone, as you start beginning to have a conversation, learn their name and use their name. Now you're not gonna be like, hey David, nice to meet you David, what brings you to DevOps days, David? Like that's, <laughs> I don't know, if, I'm sorry, I don't know if there's David here, but nice to meet you. Um, you have to learn how often to repeat it, but you wanna start repeating it out loud and in your head. I repeat people's names in my head all the time. So Dale Carnegie has a formula for this called the Lyra formula. It's broken down into look and listen. First thing you're gonna do when you start to engage with someone, when you ask them, hey, nice to meet you, what's your name? You're gonna pay attention to that person, look at them. If you don't wanna look them in the eyes, look at their forehead, the bridge of their nose, or their chin. They can't tell that you're not looking directly in their eyes. Uh, and listen to what they're gonna say. Don't think about what's the next thing am I gonna say. Just listen, listen for their name, and pay 100% attention to them. Then you wanna create an impression of this person. So as you're talking to them, you're like, nice to meet you, Susan. All right, Susan, brown hair, Susan, brown hair. <laughs> nice to meet you, Susan. <laughs> um, so start building a mental picture of that person in your head. Uh, make note of anything that will help you remember them. You know how you think, you know what you pay attention to. Repeat the person's name, I already covered this. Repeat it internally and externally. Say, nice to meet you, Susan, what brings you to DevOps days? Learn about it, great, what, how'd you get into this role? You know, what's related to your work, Susan? So start using it, because as you use their name, they're gonna stay engaged with the conversation, because they're just gonna perk up, and you're gonna reinforce that you know what their name is. And then make an association to the situation. It's easy here, like at a conference, you can be like, oh, I met Susan at DevOps days. Um, I know that you know, her role is an SRE. Um, but make an association to the situation so your brain recognizes that the next time you hear their name or you con connect with them later on, uh, you'll be able to recognize where it was and what context you had a conversation in. So learn names. It's the only way to make someone not a stranger, and if someone's not a stranger, they're a friend, and then you can have uh, a better conversation with them and start building that meaningful connection. All right, so now we're gonna get into actually connecting with people. We're, all this was just to get introduced to somebody, these first steps. So engagement, step six, riddle me this. The easiest way to start a conversation with someone is to ask questions. You don't have to be the master of a topic. You don't have to be the master of small talk. You just have to know how to ask questions. Asking questions are all about, in this situation, finding the common connection that lets people talk about themselves. People love hearing their names, and they love talking about themselves. So you wanna find a way to do that. I think the phrase goes, ask simple questions to get complex answers. Now, in a situation like a conference, like today, everyone has something in common, right? We all have something related to DevOps. We all are here for a reason. That has a simple question that you say, what brings you to DevOps days? Uh, you could be trapped in an airport and you'd be like, oh, you know, where were you trying to go on your flight? It starts building up something that you have in common, so then you can start pulling out a thread from there. Think of it, this phrase of asking questions, this phase of asking questions, is like throwing um, a beach ball in the air. You're trying to throw it to the person, so hopefully they throw it back. And you throw as many beach balls as you need to until you find something that connects and they throw it back to you and you start connecting. So a case study for this is strangers in an Iceland, as I called it. Uh, so a couple years ago, I was asked to speak in a conference in Iceland. Ugh, Iceland, Iceland. Um, it was really great. It had people from like 39 different countries there, uh, which meant there's a lot of different opportunities to talk with people from different backgrounds and perspectives. But it made lunchtime very nerve wracking, at least for myself, because I didn't really know anybody. So I sat down at this table with this group of people, and I just started asking people's names and said, have you ever been to Iceland before? 
oh, why did you come for? What brings you to the conference today? What's your role? And we started having these conversations from simple things we had in common. So I started learning about their backgrounds. Some people had uh, similarities in the technologies I was using. I was asking them what they were interested in. They were asking me. We built this connection where by the end of lunch, like we were all trading information. We were connecting on LinkedIn. And I still keep in contact with a number of these people. All right. The last part of the connection phase, Steph Sesson, is to end it, which is weird to say when you're building a connection is to tell you to stop talking to somebody. Uh, but the, the value is learning how to say goodbye. If a conversation, you're asking questions, you're starting to find common ground, you're talking to a person, it's going really well, great. Um, collect information and move on to the next conversation. You don't want to be that person at the beginning, say, of like the after party tonight. If you meet someone new and you start talking to them, you don't want to be hovering with that person the whole night. You're going to miss out on other opportunities to talk with people, and you're going to prevent that person from having opportunities. On the other side, if you're starting to have a conversation, it's kind of dwindling, uh, you're not really, you're throwing too many beach balls and nobody's connecting with you. Uh, you want to be able to stop having that conversation and gracefully move on to a new one. So learn how to say goodbye. You could say, hey, it was nice talking to you about X, Y, and Z. And then you could either say, if it wasn't beneficial, you say, well, I want to go talk to some other people now, or you know what, I'm going to go catch this next talk. It was nice talking to you. And just move, move on. Just don't like say, nice talking to you, and just walk away. You want to be polite about it. At least say something. Or if it was uh, a positive conversation, you started to really build a connection with this person, say, hey, do you have a card or a way to connect? I'd like to talk further about A, B, and C with you. Uh, if you want to learn how to do this, go talk to some vendors outside. They will, they will do this to you, and it's, it's part of their job. Uh, but it's good for you, too. So get a business card, get some information, and then I recommend um, not right in front of you of that person, but step aside, grab a pen, and write down what you talked about where you met this person. That's going to help with the connection phase, the follow through. You know, keep pinging the, con the connection. So it's all about keeping in touch. So say you've established, you've asked lots of good questions, you've started to find a common thread that both of you really wanted to talk about, and you feel like this would be someone you'd like to talk more with, you've got their information, follow up. Keep in touch. Send them an email. Say like, hey, you know, last week it was great talking with you at DevOps Days. We were talking about uh, Kubernetes, and I just read this article about it. Have you, have you seen it? Just, just wondering. And send it to them. You'll get a response back, and you start building up a co conversation that way. Connect with LinkedIn. Ask them if they want to grab a drink if you're in the same area. Be like, hey, you know, you know we both work in the city. Um, I'm really interested in what you were talking about. We want to go grab a cup of coffee one day. And we can talk more about it. And start just building up that connection. Now you're really about building up uh, a connection with someone else. Case study. Connecting with Carl. So this is Carl L. Hughes. He is the um, CTO of the Grade Network out of Chicago. He also runs a great newsletter called CFP Land, which tells you about upcoming speaking opportunities at technical conferences. Uh, so I met Carl a couple years ago at a technical conference here in the city. We were both speakers, and I sat down next to him at the speaker dinner. And I employed some of the tools I had to start having a conversation, learn why he was there in the city, uh, what he does, and we, we found a real connection. So I followed up with Carl. He followed up with me, and we kept emailing each other till like last year uh, for my podcast. I was looking for guests, and I reached out to Carl because I knew he was a big speak, uh, presenter. And I was like, hey, Carl, I want to do an episode on speaking at conferences and public speaking for developers. He's like, oh, I love that idea. He's like, you know, he's based in Chicago. And I told him, I'm coming out to Chicago uh, for work. Can we meet up then? He's like, yeah, let's grab a coffee. So we grabbed coffee. We kept talking. He recorded an episode of my podcast. I did an interview for his newsletter. Mutual beneficial, mutually beneficial for both of us. Uh, and we still keep in contact. Now, Carl does way better than this than I do. He keeps a list of everyone he meets that he thinks uh, is a positive connection. And every month, he picks like three people from that list, and he emails them. He's not asking for their information. He's not going after anything. He's just like checking in, seeing how you're doing. We haven't talked in a while. He keeps his connections going that way. All right. So the three phases of networking. The prep phase. Most important thing is any networking situation, have a goal. Then adopt a persona, the best version of yourself for that situation. It doesn't have to be who you are. Be the type of person you want to be and practice that. That's going to be hard to do. I think that's the hardest thing to do, but the more you do it, the more second nature it becomes. Start the engagement. The free second rule, outrun any anxiety. Just go into the situation. Just force yourself to do it. Be positive. Go into the smile. Learn someone's name. That'll keep them engaged, and then you, they won't be a stranger. And then ask questions. Simple questions that get you complex answers. Don't ask yes or no questions. 
build something that you can tug at and, and ask follow-up questions and find a connection between you and the person. Then the connection phase, don't linger. You know, when it feels like the conversation's ending or you wanna move on, politely excuse yourself, collect information, write down how you met that person and then keep in touch. Follow up with an email, uh, with LinkedIn message and then regularly check in with that person, hopefully see them at another conference and be like, hey, it's great to see you. If you do that, you're gonna keep getting these results of meeting people, finding something that you have in common, a way that, uh, something that you both are interested in that's uh, related, and if you keep it alive, then you're gonna start finding opportunities, ways to talk to that person. They're gonna reach out to you, and it's gonna benefit, ben oh man, I have marbles in my mouth. It's gonna benefit you, and it's gonna be benefit that person, it's gonna be benefit your career and your role. And I say go for it, if I can do this, let me tell you, if I can do this, anybody can do this. Um, so I have a challenge for everybody here. I know after this talk, there is a break. There is coffee. Everyone's going to be out there. Everybody just saw this talk. You all have this in common. Everybody here is at DevOps Days. I challenge everyone here to have the goal of meeting one new person, learning their name, and finding out why they're at DevOps Days today. If you can do that, who knows what opportunities you're going to find. And then it makes it easier to, to go out there in the break and not just like sit in the corner and not talk to anyone. So with that, I have some resources here. These slides are available at bit.ly slash DOD Connect. Uh, so it'll be tweeting from my account, which I've automated all my tweets for today. Uh, so that'll be going out later. Uh, we did an episode on my podcast about this topic, uh, episode 35. So you can go to developingup.com slash 35. The uh, interview with uh, Neil Strauss on the three second rule is smartpassiveincome.com slash session 240. And then a book I recommend along with the Phoenix Project, which was mentioned in the last talk here, um, is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Again, it's been printed for like 90 years. It has a lot of great information about how to have conversations with people. And with that, I will say thank you for having me today. I was excited to be part of DevOps Days. Um, and we have some time for questions. Yeah. Um, so what if you go up to somebody at a networking event and they haven't seen this presentation and it's just like trying to draw blood from a stone? Yeah. Do you just cut out and be like, thanks for the conversation, I'm out? I mean, you don't probably say that, but um, <laughs> no, what do yeah, you do? Yeah, I mean, first of all, everyone should see the presentation. Uh, but if they haven't, in the off chance they haven't. Um, yeah, I mean, try to dig in, ask some questions, but uh, you, you'll be able to tell quickly if the, from body language, from the way they're reacting. If they don't want to engage, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to meet with and talk with everybody. You just be like, well, it was great, you know, talking with you, and let's move on. Um, don't just try and keep forcing it. If they're if they're not any, both people have to be involved with it and want to want to do it. So yeah, don't be afraid to move on. Just politely excuse yourself, and then recommend this presentation. Yeah, yeah. How do you use these strategies to talk to your execs? Well, I would say the great thing about that is you both have something in common. You both want to deliver value to your business, right? So start there. Start with the real work-related items. Start having conversation and recognize execs, like their, their days are very usually jam-packed in my experience, right? So make them quick conversations. Try to make a lasting impression by asking them something like, what do they think of the work that your team is doing? Or what's their opinion of how the business is growing? Or what could be done better? Like find something because they care about the business value. So start there. And, and build up from that conversation. When you see them in the hallway, don't like duck out of the way and be like, oh no, uh, just, just have that conversation. In my experience with execs, like the, the more friendly, there are people too. So they wanna talk with, they wanna know their business, they wanna know people in it. So just start building things related to work and then if you can move on to a little more personal without being you know, overly uh, personal. If you wanna connect with them on Facebook, do that. Um, mixed results there, depending on your life and their life. Uh, so yeah, talk about business and, and find opportunities there. Good questions. I can take more applause too. That will always work. <laughs>